Hey, what's going on, Morn? Today we're gonna do our first tier list. It's gonna be a PvP, uh, sorry, PVE tier list. And before we start, I want to explain how I rate the different the different things. So SS is cream of the crop, best heroes in the game. You want to use them any chance you get because they're gonna help you in all PVE content. S tier is they're gonna help the vast majority of content. Um, they're going to be super good. They're going to help supplement each other. They're going to be very strong. A tier is you. Can, a tier will vary for they're good to most things, but like maybe one to two things are like really where they specialize. Uh, but if they specialize, they do a very good job. They're a little bit better than niche because that's what B tier is. B tier is niche. They're used for specific situations or if you lack some things. And C tier or or filler heroes, heroes that you throw in when you don't have a better hero right away, and you're just waiting to get one of the above heroes. And then there's D tier. You don't want to use these heroes. There's no need for them because oftentimes, even something like a, an, like one of the natural two stars, the elite hero, not the epic hero, can do just as well, if not better, when you would be using them. Now, of course, once you get into higher stars of ascension, ascension, that will change, but the heroes on D here you do not want to ascend, period. So let's just jump into it. We'll start with S tier. And it should come to no surprise that the first SS tier hero is August. August is an amazing support, especially once you hit artifact level 30. I can't tell you how awesome he's got. So you do. You have to experience it. He keeps your team alive. He can just tank massive damage, and then he's making you active more often. All over, he makes your team. The next hero is Margaret. Margaret is good in every piece of content within this game. Uh, she can solo mirror, she does well in runes, in the ruins, and she does well in campaign. She doesn't even, in fact, in campaign, most of the time, she's the highest damage dealer, and all she does is die. Um, if you can die in like round two or three and still out damage everybody else, you're probably a pretty good hero. The last SS tier hero is Sarah. I I think Sarah is the best hero in the game. Everything she does is exceedingly well. She does super well in everything, and it's very noticeable from start to finish. She's even gotten to the point now in Nightmare, I've used her to beat bosses. Um, Sarah is an amazing hero, and her silence, her CC, is, is unmatched by, by any other hero in the game. Moving on to S tier hero. First S tier hero is the Shell. Shell remains a top, top tier hero, and I don't think she's going in here. I think she will find a home, a home later as the game gets more difficult and that resurrection becomes more needed. Uh, she makes Sarah better because she hits all targets, which most most heroes in this tier do, and hitting all targets just makes Sarah better. Um, the Shell. She gives a decent, not decent, but like okay healing for her active, but her real her real key is that 10% each until the end of battle when she hits a certain HP threshold. Very good. Next is Matthew. Matthew used to be, I think, an SS tier hero because he's the best healer in the game. Uh, he heals your whole team. He operates with crit. Also, he can heal for massive damage. I've seen upward of like 150,000 on a trip. Yeah. However, with the introduction of pets, I he is no longer needed in first try bosses and nether gate bosses. So he's not needed in all content. Um, the the cat can heal ten thousand hit points to fifteen thousand hit points, and it's really obviously sufficient. Oftentimes in the in campaign, he remains absolutely needed, and you can't you know, at this point in campaign you can't go away from him. You're not going to lose it right? in nightmare. Next is the hero that just recently started to make waves and splashed in the game because that's Kaz. Cassandra does great at what she does. I have not needed her to the extent that some people have used her. Uh, I still find Sarah to be more reliable and more consistent because it's not as RNG based when pushing normal campaign. However, on bosses, Cassandra is needed. Most of the time to beat a boss, I need two to three energy players or they're going to destroy my team with an active and 
cast does that. It's RNG based, but she does that well. She heals a little bit and she provides a pretty decent attack. Well, Cass is a great hero and later in, in, in Nightmare, she is 100% needed. That's why she's S tier. She is a needed hero. The next two heroes are going up together because they are essentially the same hero. That is Sylvia and Maria. Now, Maria becomes better late game. Once you can get an artifact level 30 and you have the right gear, Maria, Maria is far more tanky than Sylvia. He even will do more damage than Sylvia because of his reflect as the enemies in campaign hit hard. However, Sylvia is deserving of S tier because she's easier to build, you get so many copies, and I'm still using her on Nightmare 12-50. 12, 12 she does very, very well, and she has more synergy with Sarah. So that, that's why I've not switched over yet. Plus, I don't have that many artifacts. And I only have one person, one hero with an artifact level 30, and that is August. The last hero in the S tier is Genji. There is not a better damage dealer in the game, period. He will out damage everybody, and it will be very noticeable. On the bosses, the last three bosses, Margaret has died before the boss. I've still managed to pass it because casting clear energy, Genji will just go to work and put in massive damage. He will do way, way more damage than Margaret could ever hope to do. And he actually does well with his counterattacks after he acted because he hits multiple targets and he hits them very hard. I, use, I sometimes have to take Sarah when I just need raw power, and I put in Genji and I clear content pretty pretty quickly. Moving on to A tier. A tier hero is Marcia. Marcia is surprisingly good. Um, I did take her artifact at plus 30 to test it to see how well it worked, and I was completely shocked that she became a damage dealing monster. She doesn't do as well as Genji doesn't do as well as Margaret, but she became much better. And she's easier to build. She, I get copies of her all the time. I think I have five, sorry, eight, five stars of her in my bag right now. She just comes all the time. She's very common in training, and she's a good hero to build early on. And she will transition. She falls off in mid-game. So when you can transition her to late-game, She's a viable, she's probably the best damage dealer within the forest faction. Next hero is Omar. Another hero that's sleeper. I have Omar nine stars. And I took Omar into the, the room where I am at 146. And he kept my team alive. I was shot. Omar is much better than I thought he was. The problem is he doesn't heal everybody. That's why he remains. S tier and Omar's hit. Omar does heal a lot more of that of those that single target. Then there's Babe. Yep. Babe. A tier hero. The third best chaos hero in the game. Yep, third. He does so well late game that I'm very, very upset with myself for feeding so many off. I now only have mid A2 and I've fed off at least two A5. To make my other heroes. Hopefully, I can get more in the future, but his energy feed is phenomenal. Our team of him, Cast in August, Alars has proven that you can take the team far. Next hero is Alex. I know people are going to be upset with this, but Alex is only an A tier hero. I know it's a hard, a hard pill to swallow, but he just is. He'll help keep your team alive, but he doesn't have synergy with the heroes above him. He doesn't make Margaret better. He, in fact, makes Margaret worse. And Margaret being an SS tier hero, you want to have her. I don't know anybody pushing in campaign or ruins that is not using Margaret in the composition because she is that powerful. You can't have a hero put into the into the, the line that's going to hinder a hero that's already so powerful. So it's going to be worthy of an A tier rating. That said, he is the second best in the game, period. He does a very good job at keeping your team alive. You can argue he is an S tier hero, but in my testing, I think he 
feel he's most appropriate at a period. Next is Lee. Uh, Lee is a niche hero. Lee has one job in the game, and that's to increase boss damage. He, he stacks weakness. Weakness increases overall damage. This is important because when you get heroes like Cass, you give up to a plus 30% attack rating. Only adding 30% to the base attack. Lee's adds the damage for, his, for everything. So it's based on his armor, all the gearing, the art of the or artifact, whereas basic attack plus boosts don't do that. That's why Lee is worthy of being here. He will increase that damage exponentially. I know G Money said I don't like Lee. That's that's actually probably not inaccurate. I don't like Lee. I think often, especially early game, he's unnecessary. He's not needed until much later, in, and even if you run him, you're not going to feel the effects until much later in the game. But he is good enough to be ready to nade here because he really does late game increase that damage like crazy high opponents. I mean, there's bosses that I'm already now starting to hit 12, 13 million damage per attack. And I'm not even using a aura at the time. Next hero is Bessa. Bessa has a very great skill set. She can she can dispel things on enemies. However, she doesn't dispel them on bosses, and that kind of hinders her from being an S. If she ever gets reworked and the dispel actually works on the boss, she will be amazing. And that will make a big difference. I tested this because she did not dispel Jim Lord's Reflect. The next two heroes in the A tier actually kind of go together, and it's Meryl Morgan. I was using a comp of August, Sarah, Michelle, Meryl Morgan, and it was actually super good in the campaign. It was not good in Ruins. Why? But campaign, I was beating the monsters, no problem at all. The issue that they're so low is they don't do well damage versus the boss. They don't increase damage versus the boss. In fact, Morgana is nearly useless versus the boss because her abilities just don't affect the boss. Then we have Musashi. Musashi is a very good hero, and he is a viable replacement for Genji. However, he is not better than Genji. And he is also not equal to Genji when it comes to damage. Musashi can honestly move up in the list if he hit all targets. And he could, uh, and he could proc Sarah's passive, but he does not. He hits one target, then does damage to the others. So it counts the one, the one damage and Sarah can silence potentially one enemy, as opposed to being able to silence um, all of them. And that makes a big difference his usefulness within the game. I'm not saying he's not useful. He is. He may be a little bit better versus mobs because he causes everyone to flee. But I don't think that he is better than Genji in any content when it comes to PV, PV. I don't think he's better than any, in any of them. And I've tested him for quite extensively. Some people say he is. Some people, I mean, it just depends on, on what you think and how you want to interact but I've never got this equal damage numbers from Musashi that I get from Genji. Then the then Erica. Erica is a very good hero. She might be arguably B tier, but her energy drain is nice and it actually affects the boss. It's it's enough that you actually see the effect also because you did not know energy does not count to 100. It caps it to 200. So if you ever have a hero like Erica or Bella, you hit the boss and you notice the energy bar doesn't go down, that's because they have more than 100 energy. They're still going to be able to act it. That's why Cass is far superior with energy. Then the last eight tier hero, when the argument can be made to move him also down to B, is Carthus. Um, a lot of people are going to be salty about this one. Arthas is an eight, is a low tier A at best. He is not a any higher. He can excel versus some bosses, but due to his lack of sustain, he is far inferior to Margaret, and they have essentially the same job. The only advantage to Carthus that kind of makes him a low tier A is he hits all targets with his active. So when he hits all targets, he has a chance to proc Sarah better. And Sarah is really a, a 
key to pushing a lot of campaign content. And then we will move on to B tier. And the first one we have is Matilda. Matilda is surprisingly good, good self sustain early. She will help you push it. If you're limited on resources, you shouldn't focus too much into her or any of the on this list unless you just need to build a new hero to replace because the reset function is quite nice. Then there's Aris. And he actually is fine. His entangled does very well and he is not a bad hero. However, tanks just in this game are just not very good unless you're named Alex or, or August. Which reminds me before I get the other two heroes in the A tier are Lucas and Oliver. Oliver Lucas is actually like Alex Light. He really protects that lowest target hit uh, HP hero well. He's he's actually a very good tank. He's just not as good as Alex or August. And Oliver gets to be A tier because Oliver's skill set is unique. He's the only dot mitigating hero in the game. And it doesn't have a lot of effect in PvP, but PvE, you get to the point where there's a lot of poison, a lot of burn, and it actually helps a lot. I was really surprised when he helped me pass some levels I was having issues with. Okay, back to B tier. Sorry, I forgot that. Getting off track. We have Alistair and Cilia. Alistair and Cilia are essentially like damage dealers, but they don't do super much damage. But they will help you until you can get one of the damage dealers like Sashi, Margaret, Parthis, Erica, or Genji above. Um, I almost feel that Alistair is more support than damage dealer, but he does okay. Um, once again, these are heroes that you only build if you have to. Then the, and then there's Cynthia. Cynthia, I actually had rated in C here because I felt she fell off very hard until I got to Nightmare the Fish people. Cynthia made all the difference. Between her, Sarah, and Cassandra, I was just flying through, through it after being stuck on it for a week. Then we have Natalie. Natalie is, is a B tier because she's niche. She is actually in a, in a composition for uh, bosses. And since she is in a composition for bosses, she is useful. On her active, she gives everybody plus 10% attack, and that becomes very useful. The problem is, she's not going to go higher than B tier because there are better heroes above her that are better support than her. She's just one that if you don't have any more, this is you should really consider adding her to get that last little bit of boss damage for max reward. Then there's Cassius. I have been told that Cassius is better than Erica. I only have Cassius at 9 stars, I just don't get copies. In my testing, this is the best that I can do. I just don't think that he's going to be higher. However, due to the way Ascension works, the fast increases stats that you get with Ascension, I can see he, him becoming more useful later down the line. And I, and if someone can give me some video evidence, or some proof on this, I will happily change his rating. And I may even change him later once I get more copies and can get him out on the tier list. Get, uh, test him better for the it's not really fair that's my a5 erica versus my nine star cassius i'm just doing with what i have then we will move on to melissa melissa is great she's margaret light um doesn't stack the dot the same way but if she active she or active her base can't remember which she she starts putting dot on she's actually very good she's a good first hero to build she does well in mirror and she will help you push the hard Then we have Irene and Carl. Irene and Carl are both B tier heroes because they fall off so heavily at the end. Um, Irene actually will do more damage than Musashi pretty consistently, actually, but she's way too squishy. Like I'm way too squishy, and she's just not. She's just not a better viable use than the other. It's not that they're bad. And they'll both help you push to hard. And Irene can actually be used to push even probably into late part. But you really need to supplement these heroes with survivability or they're just gone. 
And then there's Carl, who has survivability, but you know, his damage just falls off. And then Saruman. Saruman is surprisingly good, but he's niche. He does well in teams that guaranteed crit really makes a big difference later on in the game. But you don't really want to focus on building him too much. There are better life heroes to build. Even even Carl is better early. He just kind of puts Saruman off. Now he may this may change later on in time. Uh, once PvP starts to shake out. Because the PvP meta is all in disarray right now. Then there's Chen. Chen is not a niche hero. Chen is a good hero. And I actually could almost argue to make Chen an eighth here, but he's just not better. Than Sarah or Morgana, and they do similar things. The only difference is Chin provides a little bit of healing, and he's easier to build. Um, you build him early, he's going to help push you to hard, he's going to help push you to mid hard. Disarm is an incredibly strong mechanic, as all CC in this game. It's really going to be useful long term uh, to do that because early you definitely want to push in campaign because resources are pretty finite within the game. And then the last B tier hero is going to be Brock. Um, he actually survives very well for self survivability. Doesn't really help your team out that much. Taunt being weak, but the new the new heroes are surprisingly good. Ryder is strong in damage for a tank, and that's very surprising, um, especially compared to like all Alex and Hobbit. Um Both of those heroes, my level one Flamehorn does more damage. Than them and he only goes once every three turns so that is something to consider when calling him a good damage dealing tank on to c tier we have harris harris is like rs but worse i mean he gets reflect but it's negligible it doesn't really do enough i mean he's just not as good as rs rs is entangled is what makes him halfway decent for and he will actually help push in the fish people. But Harris, he doesn't really help. I mean, most C tier heroes don't. You use them if you have to. And then Bella. I mean, Bella does have a use. She drains energy, but the problem is she doesn't drain enough energy. And most of the time, she does. She block breaks, so then she actually gives the amount of energy she would drain, and it doesn't do you any good. Mallory. Another hero that tangles, but first, she's not much easier than the heroes above her to get, especially Cynthia, and they do the same thing. So if you're going to use one, use Cynthia. And that's that's basically what I did uh, to get through the fish people level. And we have Carol. Carol, at one point, was, was really considered to be the third best chaos hero, but she's not. Um, not even close. She's really just not a very good hero. Um, Melissa is far superior, and just as easy to build, if not easier. You just build her if you have to. She's a good placeholder, at least, and the one nice thing is she does damage all targets. Then you have Hina and Bart. Both are subpar heroes. You don't really want to build them. Hina had potential to be good, because she does 200% on two attacks to the lowest HP, so she kind of is like an assassin style hero. And she has a chance to silence. The problem is, it's just not enough. Um, most of the time, heroes like her are not even going to get a chance to go in any viable meta. And you don't need lowest target damage in PV, PvE. You really want multiple, multiple target damage. Which is also why Bart doesn't do so well. Um, but Bart, however, does ex exceptionally well in Mirror. So you should consider building him just for an early Mirror push. Which will help you advance in the long. And we have Jacob. Jacob is another hero that he's kind of like the opposite of Carl, but he's worse than Carl. Um, he'll help push to hard. He's a viable second hero, but I would build I would build Chen if I had a choice between these two easy to build heroes in the dark faction. Chen is superior, and then and then Carl superior than than Jacob in damage. Then we have these two. Hercules and Olaf. I mean. They're massive disappointments, in my opinion. Um, Olaf is actually slightly better than Hercules, because Hercules' damage never really scales to what you expect it to scale. It just doesn't get that high. 
and I, I've tested it with all ores, with really, really good gear. And he just doesn't do much damage. He does about three times the amount of what August or Alex does. And that's not much. So he's doing like 15,000. I mean, that's just, that's nothing in, in the grand scheme of things. When you got Margaret, who can die on turn one and still wipe the enemy team. I mean, her just, they, the only reason these two heroes are C tier is because they just don't die. They, they're, they're really hard to kill. And so they could be in a cheese comp for PvP, but for PvE, they're just not useful. Then we have the D tiers. I'm just going to talk about really two of them. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Adela. Okay. They reworked Adela. I was all on the hype train. She was going to be awesome. She is garbage. She is just flat out garbage. I, she doesn't deal damage well, which is what her kit said. She has a decent chance to stun, so maybe she transfers into PvP well. But even in my testing there, and it's been limited, of course, because we don't have free attacks. To test yet, she's just not very good, and you don't really want to pick her. And you're just wasting resources. The nice thing is, the game lets you reset, but with all the other heroes above her, they're just all better than her in, in every aspect of PvP or sorry, PvE. So there's really no point to build her. Then you have Dora and Faye. Um, Faye is actually not that early, but she falls off very fast. By before EZ's finished, she's she's done. Dora is not even viable, and, he's, and you just don't build her. Then we got Malcolm and Glendon. I, I don't know what they're thinking with these heroes. There's just no use for them in the game. Period. I have not found a single point for where they're good. they they don't survive well. They don't do a lot of damage. They don't heal. They don't support and like help your team do well. They're just bad. That's it. I mean, I'll test more along the. The line, but they're there. Brings it to Nicole. More detrimental to your team than helpful. She her shield actually hurts, like gives her less than what she takes. So she's just not viable. She's just not a good hero. Don't don't mess with her. And Moose Spell. Moose Spell is another one. Not a viable hero. He doesn't he doesn't transfer well into late game. He doesn't do well in early game. And his, and the burn is decent, but it's a chance to burn. And it's not increased by control rate. His only thing increased to, by control rate is the taunt. And taunt is just a terrible ability. Which is why Richard is also on here. Because taunt is just a garbage ability. It doesn't, it's just not good. And that might be what keeps Ryder being better than B tier. And then there's the last hero. And I wish there was a giant, another thing here. I'm just going to leave him down here. He doesn't even deserve to be Skills don't transfer to early game. Don't work. They work okay in extreme early game. They don't transfer to mid game. They don't go to late game. They certainly aren't viable in game. I don't know what the point of this hero was. And if any hero needs a rework, it's Ryzen. This guy is garbage. There is not a worse hero in the game. Period. There isn't. There's just no use for him in any application to this game. Oh. This includes my first tier list. This is a PvP, PvE tier list. Let me know what you think. Tell me what you disagree with. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people disagree. And the only thing I can say is I did, the way I came to all of these conclusions is I've been testing a lot. That's why my tier list has come out slower. And and then I've been bouncing idea and thought and like build crafting off different tribe mates and things like that. G Money, Alars, Chapman, they, they all do it. A really good job in helping me see like maybe missing something that's how i you know i knew Cass was going to be good i didn't know how good she was going to be I knew Bade was going to be okay i didn't think he would be better than carthage but he definitely did anyway if you enjoy my content please like subscribe and share thank you and have a great day